Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Today we will talk about formal verification of risk five cores. Here is Salah Din Hitalani, a field application engineer at One Spin. With the end of Moore's law, customization is the most convenient way to achieve performance. And here's where risk five comes to play. With the high flexibility it offers for users, there are millions of hardware chips with risk five cores that are already shipped and there are huge challenges for the verification of such cores in terms of achieving functional correctness. Is the implementation compliant to the specification? And in terms of trust and security requirements, is the design prone to software side channel attacks? Are there unspecified instructions or features present? Over the course of this presentation, we will see how OneSpin tackled all these challenges. So why RISC-V is so popular? Well, this is due to its highly configurable open source instruction set architecture. It's used in many critical application domains, such as autonomous, military, automotive, Internet of Things, and industrial. And in such domains, trust and security requirements are quite high, both for business and mission success. Commercial IP vendors, including internal IP groups, must perform extensive verification and demonstrate results to their clients. Also, open source IP users must verify, especially if they use custom extensions. But such verification is not easy. Why? Because there are numerous of optional instructions and features that are available for users to use. And there are plenty of complex microarchitecture choices such as the pipeline depth, having branch prediction, the execution, is it in order, out of order, having single issue or multiple issue pipeline, and so on. In addition, there is a provision for custom extensions as well. The usual way of doing such verification is to use simulation, but simulation itself is not enough. Why? Because simulation is not exhaustive even after spending months of setting up the verification environment and weeks of simulation for each instance, achieving complete unbounded proofs won't be possible. Therefore, bugs and Trojans would remain undetected. On top of that, reusability is not that easy. Here at OneSpin, we developed RISC-V verification app that completely verify RISC-V core RTL implementations, making sure that there are no bugs that could escape, and guarantees full compliance with the standard, including privileged ISA. Time-wise, it takes less than a week to be set up and two hours to be run, two hours sequential runtime, meaning that if you have many cores, then this time would be in a matter of minutes. The extraction of microarchitectural details is done automatically by the tool, such as figuring out the re uh, register file, the control and status registers, uh, the program counter, and so on, in addition to what kind of extensions are actually implemented in the design. Identifying unspecified instructions or CSRs is possible, and the app has been applied to two cores, one 32-bit open uh, source core, and one 64-bit commercial core, as we will see in the next slides. The general flow of one spin RISC-V formal verification starts with the RISC-V core RTL implementation. Based on this implementation, design specific information would be extracted automatically, as we talked about. Then the user need to set some parameters, such as the pipeline depth, IO and register mapping, and in case custom extensions are implemented, then the user need to specify these custom extensions as well. After the configuration is done and based on one spin RISC-V ISA formalization that is developed in system Verilog, a complete set of implementation specific properties would be generated. And this set then would be verified against the RTL implementation using one spin 360 formal verification engines. Floating point extensions are also included in the verification process. All the instructions of the floating point extensions are based on the IEEE 754 floating point standard 
that is complex by itself. It has many special cases like how to deal with denormalized numbers, plus minus infinity or zero and not a number. It's challenging to implement and historically hard to thoroughly verify. Yet in one spin, we developed many approaches to tackle such complexity, and we already have a paper presented in DVCon US 2018 with Xilinx about providing complete proof of 32-bit floating point multiplication. The app has been applied to Risky Core that has the configuration RV32 IMC. It has an optional floating point extension and the custom X pulp extension as well. It's four stage in order, single issue pipeline that has partial support for privileged spec like the user mode and the physical memory protection, PMP. Its debug support is custom. A total of 13 issues were identified in this core. Here's a list of some of them. Uh, the first one was fetch site exception that influences the execution of earlier instruction so that the update of machine CSRs was done wrongly in case the earlier instruction caused an exception itself. There were many scenarios for illegal situations in which the core was supposed to uh, throw exceptions, but it didn't. Wrong PMP computation where PMP entries were searched beyond the first match to check for legal access. As an example of floating point violation, there was the update of rounding mode register, which was done wrongly so that the update of this register wasn't seen for the next instructions due to lack of stall. The last issue listed here is invalid update of machine interrupt enable register by exception, both while entering uh, or while having the exception or while returning from the exception. If you are interested more in getting more information about all these issues and knowing the current status, then please go ahead and check this GitHub link. The second core uh, the app was applied to was the Rocket Core. Uh, it was developed originally at Berkeley and it was uh, written in Chisel. So its configuration is RV64GC, five stage in order single issue pipeline with out of order termination for long latency instructions, such as division or multiplication. It has 39 bit virtual memory address space, three privilege levels branch prediction, and replay mechanism. Here's a bunch of issues uh, that were identified in this core as well. There was division result that uh, wasn't written back to the register file. There were many illegal opcodes that were replayed instead of having exceptions. There was case of undocumented non-standard instruction that was CIS instruction, which is a pure trust risk. And there was undocumented non-standard CSR that was read back as zero. As an example of debug mode violation, there was the debug return instruction that was uh, executable outside of debug mode, which is a pure violation for the standard itself. And here's again a link for all these issues if you would like to get more information. Beyond the core, and there are plenty of once being formal automated apps that could be used to verify the whole RISC V system on chip design. Which app to use and where is a question of interest and functionality. If the interest is to optimize area, then dead code analysis can be run to identify the parts of codes that are never ever being exercised in any execution run. FSM reachability analysis could be used to check the reachability of states and transitions of any FSM, and also to identify deadlock situations in which the design would be stuck and never get out. If there is a design that has deep hierarchy and you would like to check that your clock is distributed to all modules and submodules across the hierarchy, then connectivity checking uh, is best to, to be used. Expropagation analysis can be used uh, to check if X's cannot uh, propagate to 
critical states or functional outputs. To check that register implementation is compliant to certain protocol like IP exact, then register checking can be used. On the other hand, protocol compliance is uh, used to check that the pass interface is compliant to a certain standard like AMPA or I square C, uh, so that there are no violations uh, to the standard is itself. And there are plenty of safety RTL checks that are uh, there to check, for example, that there is no array index violation where, uh, where an array can be indexed out of bound and uh, that there are no overflow or underflow violations as well. Polpino platform uh, has been used. Polpino platform was an example of a system on chip that once been apps were applied to. It's part of the PALP open source project that started by ETH Zurich and the University of Bologna. It's a single core system on chip that has a rich set of peripherals and can be used or can be configured to use either of the cores RISCI, the one we saw already, or zero RISCI, that is 32-bit two-stage pipeline core. A total of three issues were identified in this system on chip. The first one was uh, about having unique case statement violation that leads to unexpected instruction decode scenario, which is a security risk. The second one was floating point addition that delivered an incorrect result in case of adding minus zero to minus zero. And the last one was related to pass protocol violation in the case of APP pass protocol for the P-enable signal. To summarize, we found how RISC-V cores can be verified exhaustively by formal means, both to be sure that they are compliant to the standard, and second, to be sure that there are no bugs that can escape and no unintended or additional functionality that is present. We've seen how one spin RISC-V app has been applied to multiple RISC-V designs and configurations where numerous of bugs were identified and reported to the developers. And beyond the core, we've seen how we could leverage the already developed once been automated apps to verify the whole system on chip. Finally, all the results presented here are obtained using one spin suite of verification tools. Thank you for your attention. Please go ahead in case you have questions or you would like to get more information. Bye bye.